Your child shouldn't be crying over their times tables, and neither should you. Here are my top tips for conquering the times tables without the tears. Number one, make it fun. Imagine if we taught other topics the way we traditionally teach maths. All right, everyone, it's time for art class. Ah, no need to reach for your crayons. Today, we're going to memorize the color wheel. All together now, yellow ochre plus burnt sienna equals bland brown. Very good, everyone. Cut to music class. Johnny, let's put down the tambourine, mate. Today, we're going to be calculating note durations. We can't possibly expect to play a tune until we know how many hemi demi semi quavers are in a 4 4 bar. <sighs> If children find maths boring, that's on us. Maths is the language of the universe. It's creative. It should be a discovery, an adventure, not just a bunch of rules to follow like robots. Making children sit at a desk drilling sums is denying them the opportunity to experience the magic. So let children explore multiplication, lay out rows of building blocks or toy soldiers and encourage them to look for patterns. See what techniques they discover to help them multiply quickly. Let them know that they're allowed to have their own ideas, to find their own methods. That's how the maths of the real world works. Then once they start to get comfortable with the idea of multiplication, get it up on its feet, turn it into a game and make it feel like play. You could incorporate the times tables into a treasure hunt, create a fun obstacle course with a number of jumping jacks or ball bounces required at each station as the answer to a multiplication. You get the maths done and use up some of that infinite energy. Not only are we far more likely to want to spend time doing the things that we enjoy, but research shows that there's a beneficial link between enjoyment and the development of authentic learning and long-term memory. By keeping learning light-hearted and making it fun for both of you, instead of tears at the times tables, you might end up with cheers at the times tables. <laughs> Written words and numbers may be second nature to us as adults, but put yourself in the mind of a child, discovering that some squiggly marks on a page make the sounds d or g, and if you put them together, that somehow represents your canine companion Fluffy. You're just coming to terms with this and the fact that X is for xylophone, but then they tell you that X can also go in between other squiggles that don't have sounds but represent words, which are actually numbers, and now it means a word you can barely pronounce multiplication. It's all very abstract at the age of six. Luckily, we can help them out by making multiplication more physical and finding opportunities to practice in everyday tasks. When baking cupcakes, maybe each cake needs five pink stars. How many stars will they need for six cakes? It's a delicious way to work out five times six. If you're doing a spot of gardening together and you need eight seeds in each pot, how many seeds will they need to fill three pots? How wonderful when their multiplication results in 24 flowers. Weave multiplication into the things they already enjoy. If they score two goals in their football match, ask them how many they'd score in five matches. They won't even notice their learning. Once they get comfortable with multiplication as a real-world tangible concept, then we can introduce the written version. Not only would those squiggles start to make a bit more sense, but they'll be linked to a happy memory of doing something fun. <laughs> The first month of the year should probably be renamed Jimuary. Let's face it, we all start out with the best intentions. We show up and we work our Nike socks off at least three, maybe four times. Then, exhausted from our efforts and aching in muscles we've never met before, we take a little break. Not long. We return in March once, but we make that session count. Before we know it, our gym gear has been relegated to the bottom of the washing basket, our water bottle has spawned its own ecosystem, and one of our socks has disappeared entirely. This is good news if our aim is to support the fitness industry, but not so great for our efforts to be healthy. It is, however, very human. Life gets in the way. Sometimes season four of Succession gets in the way. But if you want your kids to have the best chance at conquering their times tables, it's better to commit to small daily efforts rather than a marathon session every three months. 
There's a term in Japanese, kaizen, which is a business philosophy that promotes small, continuous improvement. A really effective way of adopting a kaizen approach is by incentivizing daily practice with a habit tracker or a streaks chart. Many creators, athletes, and even apps harness the power of the streak. The idea is that your child makes a cross on a chart or a calendar when they complete their daily times tables practice. Once they've managed this a few days in a row, they have a streak. Once they have a streak, they're going to want to keep it up. If you think about it, the Japanese have been instilling this philosophy into us since they brought us the Tamagotchi. Before they know it, they start to see the results of their daily commitment, which provides further incentive to keep the streak going. You can even give them an extra reward for keeping up a five-day streak or a 10-day streak. If they get to a 50-day streak, I can almost guarantee that they'd see a significant improvement in their times tables. Now, you can make your own streaks chart, you can get an app, or you can download our free charts over at sumsofanarchy.com. I'll pop a link in the caption. Another secret to consistency is removing obstacles. Make it as easy as possible for you and your child to practice daily. It doesn't even have to be long. Work it into your daily routine and use untapped time. That's time when you're doing something that's not occupying all of your brain. For example, five minutes on the daily commute to school is a perfect time to practice a few multiplications. Even one minute over breakfast is enough to get in five to 10 questions. So decide what you can commit to and do it daily. It will be so successful, you might even consider digging out those gym socks. The to-do list involved in raising a human is unbelievable. Babies literally know nothing. We have to teach them how to brush their teeth, how to put their shoes on. They don't even know how you're supposed to pretend to look at your phone before turning around when you realise you're going the wrong way. So it's understandable if you didn't get round to teaching them the times tables before you discovered that they were struggling with them at school. And if that's the case, it can be tempting to rush to make sure that they don't fall behind or that they're prepared for the next test. But do your best to resist this temptation. If we learn anything from Home Alone, it's that rushing can lead to disaster and a road trip with a poker band. When we race through the curriculum without ensuring that underlying concepts have been completely understood, we're likely to come unstuck down the line. It's better to sacrifice a couple of test results now to give students a grounding that will serve them in the long run. After all, preparing kids for exams is important, but what's far more important is preparing them for life, making sure that they have the math skills as well as the patience and perseverance to deal with everyday challenges, not just a head crammed full of facts that will fall out before they even call pencils down. Especially since, controversial opinion, many of these tests seem to be more for the schools than the students. So take your time. Remember that learning is very much about the journey, not the destination. Giving kids the space to explore, the time to understand, will ensure that they'll develop a healthy relationship with learning, that they understand that mastery takes time. As any chef will tell you, if you rush a souffle, you end up with soup. Now, if you're looking for a really great resource that will teach you how to multiply without just memorizing, check out our complete guide to the times tables ebook. It's fun, it's fully illustrated, it's jam packed with helpful techniques for multiplication, as well as loads of fun tricks and hundreds of practice questions. We've also got a matching set of bookmarks, which are really good as revision cards and they look great too. You can find them over on our website at sumsofanarchy.com or link them in the caption below. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let us know by hitting the like button and sharing the video with anyone you think might benefit from it. Also, let me know how your times tables journey is going. Do you have any questions or maybe you have some other tips that you found to be helpful? Share them below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more maths, tips and tricks. See you later.